As a people and as a nation, we have experienced times of great crisis throughout our history. During our war for independence, Washington's army was certainly no match for the superior forces they faced. But in times of both national and personal crisis, the words of a hymn written by Isaac Watts in 1707 declared our complete dependence on Almighty God as our only hope and security. Paraphrasing the first five verses of Psalm 90, Watts expressed this confidence. Horatio Spafford, a Chicago attorney, had already <clears throat> suffered great loss in his life when in 1874 his wife and four daughters boarded a ship for England. Just off the coast of Ireland, the ship sank, and Spafford received a cable from his wife. It read, Saved Alone. As he traveled to England, he penned the words, Whatever my lot, Thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. About that time, as a nation, we had come through the deep divisions of the Civil War. How people needed to be reminded that God was still sovereign and in control of our lives and our destiny. Daniel Roberts was a little-known pastor of a rural Vermont congregation when he wrote a song to commemorate the 100th birthday of the Declaration of Independence. Later, the song became the official hymn to celebrate the centennial of the U.S. Constitution. Already our country had survived attacks from outside its borders and bitter fighting within. We had gone west all the way to the Pacific, carrying our hopes, our dreams, and our faith with us. Taking this inspiration from Psalm 44, verses one through four, Roberts wrote,
We thought we were safe within our borders, isolated by two oceans from much of the world. Americans pursued their personal ambitions and destinies. But in the 20th century, the price of freedom rose dramatically. World War I required America to send her best to the trenches of Europe to fight and die. And World War II required an entire generation to sacrifice their all for freedom. How we needed to be reminded once again that the God of our fathers, who had always been our source of strength, was just as faithful as ever. Nothing you would recall miraculous had taken place in Thomas Chisholm's life, but at the age of 75, he had learned that God was unwavering in his love and mercy. I must not fail to record here the unfailing faithfulness of a covenant-keeping God, he wrote, and that he has given me many wonderful displays of his providing care, for which I am filled with astonishingly gratefulness. Those deeply held beliefs were reflected in his most famous hymn. America and Americans have been blessed, not because we deserved it or earned it, but because God's unmerited favor has been poured out on us individually and as a nation. Because of God's grace, this is a land of tremendous opportunity, endless variety, and great natural beauty. Catherine Lee Bates felt it when in 1893, she looked out from the summit of Pike's Peak. When I saw the view, I felt great joy, she wrote, as I was looking out over the sea-like expanse of fertile country spreading away so far under the ample skies. The opening lines of a hymn floated into my mind. Her song is still the most widely sung and perhaps the most beloved hymn of patriotism ever written. Please rise and join the choir in singing America the Beautiful. Thank you. 